Prince Hero's low, and then the Tiny Wisp just coming and clean up. But heading towards the mid game, there will be Potent Secret at the same time with a massive five man wombo combo in their own right. And it will be the Yao Shaker Gods. He heads towards bottom, and we are ready to get underway with LGD versus Secret. This is a hype match, man. I'm excited. Absolutely. This is going to be one of the best series of the tournament as far as just high quality Dota. Two of the favorites at this point with how they're playing at TI5 itself. As far as which teams you're looking looking at and worried about moving forward, it's like LGD, Secret, and EG. These to me are the big three right now here at TI5. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I believe we're... Let's just see here. We're welcoming in the live stream. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Secret versus LGD. Huge match here in Group A with massive implications for the main event. Should either team win this 2-0, very likely to finish first in Group A. And with that, would get to choose their opponent in the winner's bracket. You win that one match at the main event, you're guaranteed top six. You're guaranteed over a million dollars in prize money at the International 2015. So let's get into it here. We're going to see Secret going back to their DAC picks, the Queen of Pain, Shadow Fiend, the big AoE controllers, LGD, with something they ran on day one, the Tiny IO. So excited to see how this works out and already getting ready for the rune spawns here. Seems like LGD want the bottom rune, probably going to be the ones to snag it, and it'll be Secret taking the top. Yeah, Queen of Pain S4 gets Vigil, then both teams were v fairly defensive with their just positioning at level one. We didn't see any kind of rotations towards the enemy jungle or any kind of early first blood attempts. So Secret especially were just like huddled by their Ancients, not willing to venture out at all. But we'll see how things work out here. Arteezy going to have the rough lane against the IO Tiny, and that's where Kuro, for now, just blocking the mid lane for him. But I think we'll even see Kuro just kind of hang around and help out as much as possible. Yeah, leaving Shadow Fiend alone against this dual lane is scary. They, they can just run at you. And if you're not far enough back as a Shadow Fiend, can easily give up a kill around, say, level three to five. So with the Witch Doctor here, secure Arteezy's early farm, help him get that quick bottle out, and just ensure that he's able to get his early CS going. Can also go back, stack the jungle. Uh, I think it's it's definitely the right move here. The the Queen of Pain doesn't need help, and Darkseer getting the help that he will need against the Disruptor Gyro. As, as we were talking about during the draft, it's it's a scary lane if you just leave the, the Darkseer alone. If he ever gets glimpsed in the Kinetic Field, he's dead to the Rocket Barrage follow-up. So, well, Puppy, so you're going with the dual lanes Puppy's here. done his homework. He's been reading his stat stock. Got the immediate D ward off at top lane, finding Zhao Wei. Kind of an unconventional ward spot as well. It was like right near where the big camp was, and... That helps out a lot. Darkseid really loves having that big camp available, and this will make their life a lot easier. Just he's constantly harassing and keeping Zhao Wei low on HP, already forcing out multiple tangos, so this offlane seems to be good for Secret. So far, looking at the CS here, a good start for Team Secret, but Zai takes a pounding from the Rocket Barrage, and Silar sending a warning shot that if you play too aggressive in this top lane, they will make a move on you. There's a Grave, there's a heal, but even through that, you can often run these heroes down, find those early kills with the combo. Got to be careful, and we should probably take a look here at the bottom lane quickly. This, it looks to be an S4 favored lane heavily, so Queen of Pain versus the Solo Shaker. But Yao is getting his early levels, already hits three, and definitely not expected to dominate this one, that's for sure. Yeah, and I, I like that Secret's move is just to not give him any support whatsoever in the safe lane S4. They just say, look, he can crush an Earthshaker on his own. Supports uh, helping out mid lane, helping out top lane. MMY is going to be a bit careful, did get the room, but... Taking quite a bit of damage here from the Arteezy Harass. Yeah, you can see a little extra investment by Secret in trying to control this middle lane. Not just the dual lane, but even bringing in that top support of Puppy on the Dazzle to either secure the rune or at least put some harassment the way of LGD. And we sh there has been a lot of stacking already, guys, both in the Radiant and Dire big camps. With the Io, no surprises. With the Shadow Fiend, Darkseer, also no surprises. We may not, this This looks like a game that could be a bloodbath early or could very easily just turn into a, a very long-term economy game with both teams really looking to maximize their farm. It's, it's just going to come down to whether or not the teams are finding their openings. Yeah. One of the big kind of where, where uh, the forks that LGD can take is whether or not they get the Blink Dagger on Tiny. If they get any kind of an early game advantage, I think he'll go for it and try and just snowball from there finding kills. But if it really feels like it's a bit of a stalemate or Secret is slightly ahead, he'll play the farm game and look for the Aghanim Scepter as his first item. We've seen a bit of both coming out from IO Tiny's, and it really depends on the tempo the game is going. He's really not farming right now is the worry as uh, Avalanche comes out, won't connect on anything. Couldn't have gone even if it did with Kuro ready to back up our team. Easy, but the CS on this Tiny is leaving quite a bit to be desired. Only five creeps. Arteezy sitting at 19 and 8. Of course, as expected, Queen of Pain crushing the bottom lane uh, for S4, 19 and 10. And even the offlane Darkseer of Zai sitting a 
towards the top of the CS charts, 15 and 1. So, dare I say it, gods, they are winning two lanes convincingly. And the third, they're getting more than you would normally expect out of a Darkseer off lane, yeah. thanks to Puppy's support. Absolutely. And this is where this Queen of Pain Shadowfiend opening is so strong. I think Secret kind of took advantage of the fact that they know they like to run weak laning heroes in the off lane for Yao. Yao doesn't get the kind of dual lane support that a lot of off laners get this tournament. He's normally down there by himself on an Earthshaker, on a Tusk, on a Clockwork. And Secret's plan was just to early skirmish. The lane. Here we go. Could be the first blood. Arteezy looking for the openings here. There is a grave available, and he's going to commit onto maybe. He finds him. Puppy protecting the shadow feed, and now MMY the trade. The chase goes on, and what do you know? A surge forward. He does get glimpsed back. Shao Eight will survive, but mid lane left in shambles. A two for nothing, and on top of the early creep advantage, Secret are already in full control of this game. Absolutely. This is close to three lanes one. I guess the top lane's still a bit of a, a stalemate and just a draw between the Darkseer and the Jarakopter, both of which are farming. But this is going to be tricky. This is not like LGD have a lot of easy ways to turn this game around. Around the time Gyro hits level seven, you can start involving him in fights around the top rune, around the mid lane as needed. But it's not an easy hero to roam with unless you're also bringing the Earthshaker. At that point, LGD are forced to five men much earlier than they'd like to, and Secret will just say, well, you want to five men? We're going to play the economy game and just out-farm you. And if you five men into Secret once they get their core items, that can easily work against you. You've got the early mech likely coming out here for Zai. Maybe Arteezy the one to pick it up, but either way, they'll have some team fight in short order. And Secret keep the Cast lane me. pressured. Mid lane, there is aggression here. Fissure coming in. Avatos, they finally get a kill. Kuroki... Not able to save Arteezy. That was much needed. Nice rotation from Yao, and considering how tough this bottom lane is, might as well look for the plays elsewhere. Yeah. There was a Radiant Observer Ward in the areas. We're going to see a, a battle of D wards here, but that Hill Ward about to expire. It's already done its work, and well, they might get the extra 50 gold out of this. <laughs> nope, not even that. <laughs> Kuro says no. Denied. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's the kind of place Yao likes to make in general, and it's just unfortunately at the cost of, like, there's been a solo hero getting complete free farm. Queen of Pain topping the CS charts by a big margin, so we'll see uh, what LGD's next move's going to be. But Yao's going to want to keep on getting involved, I feel. He doesn't want to just sit idly leeching experience in this bottom lane. You mentioned the gyrocopter moving, and... Maybe we, we don't normally see it from Silars, the thing. We did see it, we've seen it more with Maybe. It, it definitely feels like with the introduction of Maybe to LGD that Silar has not, he's no longer really the one position player. Maybe much more reminiscent of how Arteezy was on EG, where he might have gone mid at times and even play like the iconic solo mid heroes or dual lane mid heroes, but was really the carry player for EG. And it feels like Maybe's taking over that role, which is where you'd like to see that aggressive style of Gyrocopter this game. Get Silar involved early, go for the smoke ganks, maybe give a support the lane top, but it's tough to do that when you see the constant pressure. And RTZ, he's found the stacks, not only Shaoid, but also a gigantic pile of creeps. This is something else they you have, have to protect. To protect. Yeah. This is way too much gold to give away. And they are Gyro. moving in with the call down on Ortizzi. They want to go, but Zai's able to zone him back. The Rays will miss. Fissure blocking off a few. They try to isolate Kuro, but they can't bring him down. The heal is enough. He survives. One last range creep auto attack. Can't get the job done. There's your earn chart. He LGD will need survive. A five man these, this They're neutral five stack. manning they their own to. neutrals, and they need it, but it's too late. Ortizzi's already stolen half of them, and he's going to get more. Only two big creeps survive the slaughter. They need Arteezy. Ava, toss, Fissure, they get the kill. S4 even blinks into it, but the Queen of Pain ult to turn it. Maybe Neutral's not poking him. He barely makes his way out of this one. And Silar does find S4 on the backside. They get the two fattest cores on that. Secret. They do miss most of the Neutral kit, but at least get some experience. That was definitely a salvage for LGD out of what looked like a terrible situation. Absolutely, and you can't even, like, that, that's the right play to go for for Secret. Arteezy in the front lanes, if they get the Grave off, that doesn't go as as one-sided as it kind of ended up in going in LGD's favor. It was very much the burst damage of LGD just catching Puppy a little bit by surprise, surprise and a rare miss on the grave. Arteezy was, I think, banking on having it to back him up there. And If he gets grave there, they get slaughtered, yeah, honestly. He can continue to... Like, his raises were coming up any second, so during those that grave, he's throwing two, three raises, and LGD are losing heroes. Well, LGD, this game could have snowballed totally out of control, but they are able to stay in it with that fight, and they make it a pretty close game. A thousand gold lead for Secret, only about a 1250 experience lead, and...
So much of the, of the game plan is going to hinge on maybe. What's the item build here? For now, he picks up the completed treads, it looks like, bringing out uh, the magic wand as well for MMY in short order. But does he skip the blink at this point? There's a lot of squishy targets, but they're going to get tankier quickly. The Shadow Fiend normally getting some plus stats items early, and potentially we even see S4 go for that early BKB or exit. at which point the blink could backfire. If you don't get those kills, you, you may not really get much value out of it. Yeah, TZ already committed to the Yoga Club, so he'll be rushing BKB with Zai being able to go for the mech. And as you said, they're looking for early stats, early just survivability, and that's where a blink dagger on Tiny will kind of come maybe at a time where it's not going to be able to get the easy kills that you'd hope for. He's not snowballing by any means, but let's go. Secret, their turn to move. They smoke up, TZ leading the way, and they think about heading straight towards the bottom lane. Instead, they're going to wrap around here, moving towards the Roshan pit. May try to get a ward up. Yao, yeah, very low HP, and should he go down, that is the majority of their strong tower defense gone. Just the Ancients warded for now. Okay. We've seen a lot of teams forget about the Ancients. Well, there was a couple of games that come to mind. Secret was playing one game where Arteezy was Templar Assassin, the Dire Stide, farmed a quad stack with a double damage rune, and suddenly was totally out of control. I believe that was the game where he had an Aegis and got a triple kill after respawning with like a single Deso Daedalus crit. So uh, a couple of Bristleback games as well. Ancients are definitely something you want to keep an eye on here. And well, it might seem like a, a big commitment using the smoke for that, but considering there's a tiny wisp and a gyrocopter in this game, may allow Secret to pull ahead if they're just looking to play the farm game here. And also the fact they didn't put the ward above the Roche Pit on that big cliff means they don't really care about pushing this bottom tier 1 tower, because they could have easily put that ward down and used that vision advantage over the trees, over the bottom tier 1, to apply pressure down here, but... Puppy even had two wards who could have blocked the Ancients and what it says, nope, we don't care about it, we're gonna play our game, play, sit back, wait till we get our items, and then use our item advantage to be able to take down towers with an Orchid on Queen of Pain, with a BKB on SF. It's They're not gonna rush things. It's LGD's turn to smoke. They bypass the double damage and there's no Radiant Vision of it, so they could have gone for it, but they didn't realize as Zai narrowly misses breaking the smoke. He is going to, but it's in an awkward position. Fissure comes through, he's on the right side of it, but doesn't matter. Too much burst damage. Meanwhile, mid lane, MMY Aya was picked off by Arteezy as the trade. Yeah, they went in on, and they the went in on the Witch Doctor, Doctor yeah. So Io a Tiny, two for one. Io Tiny killed Witch Doctor, Queen of Pain TP, TP didn't get a counter kill. They want Arteezy, Emma maybe just lump, jumping forward, he's gonna get the toss oh, back into Silo. that's combo. not where you wanna be if you're a Shadow Feed. Oh, into his waiting arms, a hell of rockets will end Arteezy. LGD showing some excellent aggression here, and making up for a slow farming laning stage with some really nice movements here at the 11 minute mark. Yeah, kills on Shadow Fiend especially valuable. He's topping the net worth chart well over, like about a thousand net worth ahead of the Gyrocopter and even more ahead of the Tiny of Maybe. So important kills going LGD's way. Yeah, these are farmed cores. You get those kills early, and it really does equalize things. Ooh, they TP in the gyro. They're going to relocate forward, maybe, finding the Avatar directly up and down, but there's a great from Kuro, uh, from Puppy to try and turn this down. The Death Ward from Kuro driving them back. LGD forced to disengage. They may leave the Tiny here. Now they're just going to back off towards mid and go farming. Still, they chase on the Puppy. They know the Graves on cooldown. They might be able to make a play here. The Rocket Barrage coming through. He can't get out. Fissure cuts off any chance of retreat, but wasn't even needed in the end. LGD taking the fight to Secret, who meanwhile are pushing top with Zai, it looks like. Seems like Secret are waiting their, on their first round of key items at this point. The mech on Zai about to come out. That's the type of item that can turn a fight like that one we just saw yeah. bottom. This is LGD willing to commit as many heroes as possible to make sure fights and just early objectives kind of go their way. In this case, it's just been a few kills here or there. The Disruptor glimpsed back on Shadowfiend there as he TP'd in, very crucial. But for Secret, they're much more about splitting their resources, getting farm on all five of their heroes. They're known for having really farm support. In this case, it was the Darkseer pushing a T1 tower in the off lane, working towards his mech. And Secret aren't we too worried about like uh -oh. losing a Dazzle bottom there when it's LGD 5 Manny and they're getting stuff elsewhere on the map. This bottom lane looks a little dangerous. No TP on Kuro. S4 doesn't want to leave him alone to the Wolves. And now out the Courier flies. It is bringing a TP, so he'll have that option. They even have to rotate a third hero in Puppy, but already LGD, they're satisfied with what they got. They back off. Silar completing the drums, going for that utility early pressure build that we see from a lot of Gyrocopters now and leaving way for maybe to, to be the hard carry. And now decision time comes, gods. 13 minutes in, it's basically a dead even game here. Only a 1500 gold lead for Secret. Does he want the blink? Yes, he sir, does. he does. What do you think? Is this a good, is this gonna work out? Yeah, I, it seems to suit maybe his playstyle more. It's 
allows him to be aggressive, go for kills, and as much as he does play more of that one position now, as far as Farm Freddy goes over Scylla, he loves to be involved in any any and all action. It's the LGD way. If there's a fight going on, all five of your heroes are there. So gives him that initiation. Unfortunately, the window for using the Scylla while Arteezy doesn't have BKB is quickly ending. Arteezy now just a couple hundred away actually has BKB money. So that means it's not going to be quite as potent for killing him. But if anything, he wants to blow up the Dazzle. He wants to blow up the Witch Doctor. If you go on someone else, they're going to get graved and kept alive. If you can find a Dazzle or a Witch Doctor, that's an insta-KO. Meanwhile, Secret won a fight around the mech that's been freshly purchased by Zai. Now up to another 700 gold. They don't have the level 2 Queen of Pain ult just yet, and they are rotating 4 all the way through the middle lane. They may run into maybe in a bad position here. 3 in the river. Blink back out. Well, the Blink coming in handy there. Now it's MMY's turn to run, but they don't have a tier 1 top. They get a little bit of vision. He's got a haste turn. They both can escape here. LGD wasting a lot of Secret's time, and it looks like they should get out with no casualties. One more Blink into the trees. The TP out. He's got it. Not using it just yet. They're holding for a relocate, and they may even go in on Kuro, who's run right by MMY. The haste is there. The cast not going to bounce, and the commit Mid. Tether's back. They look to engage. The mech is in play, though. This could completely turn the fight. Not sure if LGD got their eyes on it before the fight broke out. Maybe a danger as well from the backside comes Yao. Rushing in with Siler together. The call down. Do we work? Zai about to drop as well. The double off the bat for Siler. S4 forced to blink away. They get the tiny but heavy cost for that one, gods. Three heroes down, including the Darkseer who just completed his mech. And meanwhile, Arteezy looking for the trade as he goes on the tower mid. He's got a BKB Requiem this one. He does do a lot of damage, brings down MMY, not respecting the Requiem, and they even gets the tower as well. When the dust settles, not a terrible trade for Secret, although it looked pretty bad at first. Yeah, it looked bad at first. Great flank coming from LGD. Io and Tiny bought so much time for backup to arrive. Unfortunately, they still lose the Tiny there. Io trying to heal him up with the tether and the overcharge, but just couldn't quite block enough of the damage there, so... Didn't go as well as LGD would have hoped for, considering they had kind of positional advantage. They got Io and Tiny out of there, they figured out exactly where Secret had four heroes, but they Dyer's couldn't keep Tiny top. alive, He's and then they lose top. that Wisp as well as T1 Tower mid means Arteezy is suddenly looking fantastic. He's got 1300 gold after the BKB, 2000 net worth ahead of Silas Gyrocopter. He is really out of control. And not even mentioning the Tiny in this game, which we have seen Tinies in the past historically. They have an Eggs by now. They're clearing big Ancient stacks. By no means the case for Mebu. Still feels rather far behind to fight, despite all the fights that he has been involved in. Uh, as we just saw, the Earthshaker of Yao. This could be the next big item for LGD. He's just about picked up the Blink. In fact, he just it, purchased yeah. it. And he is level 8 now, so he's got two points in the, the Aftershock here. But it almost feels like LGD have to fight right now. If they want to play the farm game, they don't really have the farming items. No Helm of the Dominator on the Gyrocopter of Silar, no Ags on the Tiny. And Shadow Fiend alone is just going to be able to turbo farm way more than these heroes. Yeah, I don't think you want to get into a full-on farming game against Team Secret right now. Uh, Queen of, you've got a window, especially before Queen of Pain really finishes any major item. S4 going to be going for, it looks like, Hex, not the Orchid. Hmm. I think just recognizing that both, I mean, Gyro, Tiny, both going to be BKB carries, and the Orchid is just isn't going to be coming in a timely fashion for S4. It's so, so good against Wisp as well. Tries to tries to go for the, the defensive relocates. If you find the Wisp, oh, there's your Blake in. But Puppy with the quick grave, he was ready for this one. They're going to glimpse him on back. Is there going to be a kinetic field follow-up? Fissure blocking Puppy away, but it should be enough with... Nope, there's the mech. Sai will bail him out. Very nicely played by Secret. Good defensive retreat, and they dodge a bullet. It does force a four-hero rotation bottom, which allows LGD to put a little extra pressure mid, but look who's wrapping around with an invis rune. It's Arteezy coming from the north. No sentries in sight. This could be a total disaster for LGD. Let's see if he finds the opening here. He's got the BKB as well. Only a toss to really do anything about oh. it. Oh, but right as he moves, an MMY just happened to be tethering away with Silar. They have a toss. They engage with the Fissure. Echo. He doesn't get off the BKB. Yeah, was ready with the Blink Echo. That he is another costly death for Arteezy, who continues to farm out of control, but so much of the value he's gaining is being given right back to LGD by these kills. Yeah, just a... Uh Kind of weird timing where Arteezy shows himself as the Wisp tethers out. He's thinking, okay, if he's not tethering, I can maybe just quickly double raise him, get a quick kill. And then the combo from LGD to kill him. He had no chance to BKB. If he, unless he preemptively BKBs as soon as Tiny's in range before he blinks, but 
you, that's just like not really efficient BKB usage. So LGD just capitalizing on maybe a small mistake from Artur. And it's something you've talked about so often when we've cast together is that Earthshaker is such a good counter for BKBs, even though yep. they block pretty much all of the damage from his ultimate. It's the instant stun that can just give you fits as a, a hero like a Shadow Fiend. When there's that one carry hero, I mean, everyone's seen the famous Envy clip where it's like he's yelling at his Earthshaker just to blink, echo slam the enemy gyrocopter. This is, this is the hero. You can instantly just KO and cause so much problems with that blink ulti, killing off enemy cores. In this case, it's going to be the Shadow Fiend of Arteezy, who's going to be going to be the main target of the Earthshaker. Yeah, there's a Grave Sting behind him, but the, the beauty of this is after the Exclam, you have a Fissure, so that Fissure's always going to be headed the direction where Dazzle's waiting for the Grave, so potentially, you don't even get that Grave off. Well, completed BKB on the way for Silar Courier, flying out now, I, I believe. Yeah, there you go. And with that, he gets a whole lot tankier, and the difference for Secret is until they get that Hex, they Radius don't have the same level of blow a hero up potential. This is going to allow LGD to five man if they'd like. We talked about maybe playing more of a one position, but this is one of the a game where he's actually not really fulfilling that role. He went back and completed drums. It's been Silo who's actually getting more of the farm this game than the Tiny. It seems like the way the flow of the game is developing, LGD feel like they can just fight secret. They've been winning most of the skirmishes. I think it's confidence more than anything. We, we could farm and we have great late game, but let's just do what's working. Let's keep on punching and make secret come to us. They are moving in like they want to go. There's an Observer Ward scouting out Arteezy, but a lot of backup for him. LGD, they might be confident in some of the fights, but this would be a full 5v5 clash. So they want to approach it just right. Maybe moving in from the north, Secret positioned quite well behind the tower. They, they drop an Observer through the tree line, so not going to be spotted by LGD here. And it's out of range of the Sentry in the woods. They were waiting out the Echo Slam, which oh, there just go. comes back Here up. comes the smoke. This could be tough though. Silar, a tough hero to initiate on. They don't have the best lockdown to prevent that BKB. And there is the threat of a Shaker counterplay with Arteezy and S4 showing like this and nobody else on the map. LGD are going to back off and force Secret to show themselves. Yeah, so I don't think Secret can make much. And a good point you mentioned that Secret, I mean, this is kind of a classic draft. They don't actually draft normally around having a lot of control and disables, but there's no way for them to really jump gyrocopter and kill him b preventing a bkb they haven't got like a blink lion hex they haven't got a blink echo slam from an earth shaker they only have witch doctor cast which well you see coming you can easily dodge it that's where s4 is going for this hex rush as well this is going to be the way they can actually gank and take take out these oh, kind puppy. of core heroes puppy. not where he wants to be avalanche toss dunked by maybe that was just too easy he thought he was safe with the Observer Ward, as well as the Sentry, but guess what? The Sentry is just out of range yeah. of the Dire Observer, and a bit unfortunate there for Puppy. Ends up going down, but already Secret looking for the trade. Arteezy pressuring the mid lane, forcing out a quick glyph. This is before LGD even starts hammering on that Tier 1 bottom, and just good at making the best, best out of a bad situation is Secret in general, and we, we see it again here. Not even going for the tower bottom. LGD felt like they could have taken that freely, but... Because of Arteezy's counterplay mid, they're forced to back off. Arteezy's in a really deep position. We'll they find have a, a courier. No, he won't find the courier. They have a glimpse. There's your initiation again from Yao. They go in with the dunk. The grave from Puppy could turn this. No, he didn't get it off in time. Oh, he could have grave first, but he went for the weave instead. It's going to cost him heavily as LGD now can go down mid for a tier one. Even a better tower to take than that tower in the bottom lane. And no way Seeker can defend this without their Queen of Pain. Yeah, Turo went off like to the dire secret shop trying to snipe a courier while that was going. I actually thought it was maybe in a bad position to get caught out by another Blink Echo Slam or Tiny combo, but LGD find a key pick off, get a tower out of it. This is one of the, to me, this is the best team in the tournament when it comes to just taking objectives. They're so good at turning a kill or even not even a kill. They just find, they move, they force their opponents to move around the map and rotate and just create space for towers to drop. They're just really good at it's kind of five manning a lot of the time, but it's it, they do it in such a way where they never really put themselves in harm's way. And they have been catching up as far as the farm goes on the back of those objectives. It's not like all they're doing is five manning. The gyrocopter of Silar, only 30 CS behind Arteezy, which is a much smaller Radiant's percentage difference than what we saw earlier. Even even in the case of maybe's Tiny, he's not quite there with the enemy Darkseer and certainly not with Arteezy's Shadow Fiend, but 
He is catching up nicely here, guys. And once he gets the eggs, the farm will accelerate. Yeah. Suddenly, Silar with 3,000 gold, maybe it's closing in nice on the Agonims. And here we go mid, looking for the jump. There's five. Avatos to start. They're going to relocate in the wind. Joined by the Gyrocopter of Silar, who immediately rushes in. The Death Lord's going to punish that IO off the bat. It's Silar next. It's a full duration Death Lord, only now canceled out by the Fissure of Yao, but it took too long. And three end up falling on the back of it. Kuro making the plays here for Secret. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, just Secret were in position. They, this is the, how the fights are meant to go for Secret. Arteezy on the front lines with the great protection, and they they throw everything at Arteezy. They didn't have anything left to cancel that Death Ward, and a BKB Gyrocopter on the front lines is not as scary as you'd hope for when you're tanking a full duration Death Ward. You've got the Minus Armor coming out from the now Max Shadow Fiend passive. The Death Ward does a lot of work, and the Weave starts to tick in over the course yep. of these fights, so... Something LGD will have to respect, and this may give them pause in the upcoming team fights. And we see Secret, although it's not a reliable team fight, if they get it off, it is every bit as devastating as LGDs. Yeah, I think that's going to be kind of an awakening for LGD. Like, okay, this Death Ward is actually a big problem. Because of all that minus army you mentioned from the Shadow Fiend and the, the Dazzle, you have to make sure that Death Ward isn't on Sila during his BKB. Otherwise, he's going to melt. Because. He's fairly squishy to the physical damage. There's already he's got to worry about the Shadow Fiend right clicks. You don't want to have to have him worrying about the Death Ward as well. Maybe just marching into the enemy woods right past the Radiant Observer. He has eyes on Puppy who backs off here. <laughs> yeah, this is a bold maneuver. He's like, there's no Requiem. He doesn't have, only now <laughs> no is anybody wall. even in the, the yeah. neighborhood, but no PKB, just counting on quick reactions with the blink should anyone go his way. Mid lane, meanwhile, all blink forward, looking for MMY, a bit too tanky, courtesy of the Buckler. And and MMY has done a pretty good job of keeping up as far in this game on the Wisp. Considering how the game started, mech almost complete now. That armor will definitely help versus Secret, maybe even more so than the, the heal that we normally look at the mech for. Yeah, that, that last fight, if he had a mech, could have gone very differently. Because at the start of the fight, he tanked a lot of damage, almost was able to heal himself back up and stay alive, but just couldn't quite do it, so... Nice item choice from him. Gyrocopter going to be going for Butterfly, which will help deal with a lot of the physical damage output. It not only gives him the evasion, but also just a little boost to his armor because of all the agility you get. So very important item choice coming out. Even if Silas not going to have the most insane damage output, this is going to be far more useful. And just gives you a lot of bonus armor as well for the, the agility, which is going to help against the physical damage as the game moves along. So the Scythe device for S4, we haven't seen it yet, gods, but it's only 200 gold away. And... This could be big. With this, the IO that we saw die rather quickly last fight may just die before the fight even commences. Let's see, let's see if he's able to farm it and what kind of impact it has. That's the kind of playmaking item that they, they don't really have when it comes to abilities for that instant initiation. Yeah, they, they really out. need it against the BKB carries especially. And Tiny doesn't have one now, but you know, at some point he's kind of making his way towards one either after his Assault Caress or even as his next time after the Ags. You need to have a late game hex, otherwise they have no control whatsoever for LGD. This is not a very farm timey tiny though. And in fact nobody particularly farmed this game. There's just been so much fighting. Good creep scores are on the board, but a lot of deaths for pretty much every core. You've got four on the Shadow Fiend, two on the Tiny who isn't quite there in terms of the farm department, and as a result, heroes taking a bit longer to head towards their big beefy items that come out in the mid to late game. Yeah. But we see defensive postures from both teams. Heidi in the trees, the Earthshaker of Yao to the south, back in the Dire Jungle, MMY just sitting behind Silar. Everybody knows a bad fight here is going to give up a rush to the enemy squad. And with that, you mentioned how good LGD is at taking objectives. Secret is definitely one of the best teams in the tournament in that department as well. And they're going to try for something here. It's a smoke gambit. Moving straight right. into Roche. They may just try to sneak it straight up. Yeah. And there's actually I no Dire Vision anywhere nearby. But everybody's missing as well for the Dire. And they have a deep ward here towards bottom. There's even a ping coming out right now for maybe. They may make the move on the pit, but it's going to be a quick Roche. Medallion brings this low. Arteezy should be prepared to grab this Aegis up. He gets bashed at the wrong moment. They may even just jump in blindly. If they did, they'd have ice here. Oh, they're too late. The Fissure just split second. Slow. Shao 8 almost got them vision with that kinetic field, but wasn't quite in time. If that took 
three to four seconds longer, LGD yeah. may have just gone in with guns a blazing. Yeah, it was a clever Roshan too, because neither team's really been in a position to take Roshan all game long. Even then, Secret weren't in a position to take Roshan by like they having... They did it anyway. <laughs> yeah, they did anyways. It was like a Cloud9 style Roshan where they just, they smoke in and try and use the fact that it's a surprise to not get detected. And uh, LGD kind of figured out eventually, but by then it was too late. Similarly, LGD have not been in a position to go for Roshan, despite having two decent physical damage carries in Tiny and Gyrocopter. They just have, neither team can really put themselves in that position where they're in the pit and you've got a big initiating heroes in like the Dark Sea, the Earthshaker, who can just get the jump on you. With the Aegis, let's see what Secret look to do here. Maybe just farming out the bottom lane, Arteezy swinging towards top. He has opted for a Sanjin Yasha after the BKB. Looks like he's just tanking up against the burst damage as much as possible. And they're grouping up his five at top secret. They are looking to fight here. The butterfly's just been picked up by Siler. He's been hexed instantly. There's the reveal. Quick relocate out by Momoya. Yeah, he was ready for that. They will lose the Wisp, most likely, but well worth it to save the Gyrocopter. Yeah. Spend your money. Oh, it's all I'm And I believe that was also the reveal of the Hex as well from S4. Yeah, I, unless maybe they scattered it, uh, scattered it in Roshan or something, but... But they're going to push on with no Wisp, no buyback for 40. LGD most likely just counter push here. Yep. They've already got bottom lane. Oh. Maybe it's tiny, barreling towards the tier 2. They'll pressure mid, pressure bottom. This is not too bad of a position to be in for LGD. They'll have to give up their tier 2 top, but they can get some damage on bottom, get some damage on mid. Unfortunately, it's a tiny, so this doesn't take very long. Yeah, they, they're actually pushing just as fast the bottom lane as the top lane's being pushed by Secret. So uh, let's see, is there a Dire Glyph available here? They do have one. They want to save it for the high ground, I think, because there's a legitimate... Here comes Secret. They're going to force TPs back by poking at the T3 tower and maybe even look to commit to a high ground siege here. How does Secret get in here? They do have the Blink Hex capabilities. They get some eyes on RTZ, throwing out a mi homing missile. Ideally, they'd love to bait out that BKB, but... Secret will just calmly focus the missile down. And now they've got the IO of MMY back. No relocate just yet, though. It should be cooling down in relatively short order. Uh, one second and counting. Now they go. On RTZ, doesn't BKB. Very patient. I feel a lot of carry players in that position would just panic insta BKB. And then yeah. any chance of pressure is over for over a minute, but And good play it. from LGD. You've got to just use that combo, get SF down to half HP, because that's how you're going to stall the push. He doesn't want to throw his Aegis away for nothing, so you have to just get whatever free damage you can on that Aegis push and carry. And Secret decide, well, they're just going to keep doing that. We're going to back off, otherwise it's, we're kind of wasting our time here. As much as they'd like to be able to get a tier 3 tower and racks with this Aegis, once LGD had 5 alive again, it just wasn't going to be possible. It feels like Secret are about to hit a really good timing. Kuroki has the level 2 death ward. He's almost completed the Ags. Somehow Kuroki always finds his farm. I mean, you look at the hero that he's on, and it doesn't feel like a Witch Doctor should be able to farm the way some of other Kuro's other signature heroes do, but somehow he always finds a way. And with that Ags, the level 2 weave also in play, all the minus armor they have through the death ward, and Arteezy about to get his next big item up to 4.3k. That could be the opportunity to go for a high ground push. But now Xiao Wei caught out. This is big if they can find him. He glimmers and tries to run away. They have detection and they will bring him down. Quick pick there for LGD. And it's going to be up to... Or uh, for Secret. And it's going to be up to... LGD to back off. Yao gets caught mid. Oh, this is the one they can't afford. Losing to support's one thing, but Yao's dead for 45 and gods. He that doesn't was... have a buyback. Good news is mid lane has been shoved deep towards the tower. Yeah, I feel like both those pickoffs are a bit sloppy from LGD. And the first one was just good secret response. As soon as they see the D warding happening, they take the jump. But Yao, he knew where they were. He knew they could just blink and get to him quickly, but didn't really respect the it's, initiating power of Secret. It was the, it's the Scythe device. It's been the difference maker here. Top lane, Vac wall thrown they out just, the TP. to discourage LGD, and that means they'll be lacking a hero for the base Neither defense. Neither hero has TP. Creeps are coming in right now. They're going to raise up the top lane and focus on mid, it looks like. Silar sprinting back. Fortunately, he's got the butterfly. Activates it immediately, but he may not have evasion for this upcoming fight. We'll see if it cools down in time. Arteezy, there's the Thunderstrike onto him. Respawning in a moment is Yao, and they do get eyes on Silar. The Hex again, they've trapped him outside the base. Puppy was expecting the walk back, and Silar tries to run. He's even committed a BKB, but the Queen of Pedal, and right clicks from the Shadow Fiend of Arteezy, enough to bring him down. Again and again, Secret finding the picks, and all of it on the back of this Scythe of Vice from S4. 
What a difference this yeah. pickup has made. That and the vision too. Like first they cancelled the TP back at top and he had to walk back to base. He walks past Ward, so there's your pick. They're gonna go board. now. Avatar on Arteezy trying to stall this out, but he just stands and continues to deliver. Now a completed I have Scotty up, muscling his way in towards the LGD base, and they're able to force out a very crucial buyback. And again, the hex catches out MMY. He's gonna die in the backsides. They need something for this, but the death ward of Carl's going. They've got no way to stun him. Finally, they'll disable it. LG GD self-destructing, known for their composure in most games. Not having it here. Secret just finding opening after opening, chunking down Silar next, driving him back into the base, and they won't let him escape. That's a dieback on the gyro. It's an ultra for Arteezy, and it might just be game right here, right now. Again, the Graves, the plays, Secret crushing through. They bring down maybe as well, and they're going to heal up Arteezy. He's feeling confident, swags towards the well, and they get the GG. Secret. So many outplays in a series of three to five minutes when before then it was back and forth, dead even. All of a sudden, the switch flips and it's all secret all the way. Yeah, it was, it was 28 minutes, 29 minutes of just dead even Dota. And from that Roshan sneak onwards, secret just outplayed.